Well, it's now September 10th, um, 2017. It's been uh, a while uh, since we've connected. Um, I took the summer off to just chill a bit from all of this. Uh, it was fun, uh, but I did want the break. And uh, I'm gonna get um, more specific and cover some some news events, I have opinions about those, and um, I think that that might be of more interest to you. Currently, the big event right now is uh, Hurricane Irma. It is now 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, the rain has started to come down pretty heavy. I am holed up in my uh, laundry room here. Uh, it's a little warm, it's not a room that I air condition for obvious reasons, but it is one of the safest rooms in the house. It's got good hard concrete walls, as you can see here, um, it does have a window, um, but all the rooms here have a window. Um, the smallest window is in one of the bathrooms, but even the bathrooms do have windows. And um, that is probably the safest room in the house. It is the room that I will go into if need be. Um, right now, the rain's uh, becoming increasingly heavy. Uh, there seems to be uh, a steady breeze, but I wouldn't call it um, windy just yet, um, but that is um, expected later in the day. Let me finish my point about uh, the safest room in the house and the reason why the bathroom um, that I'll be using is the safest room in the house. It's not only because it has the smallest window, obviously projectiles can go through, open, th through windows, whether they be open or closed, um, they should be boarded up, uh, but they can't be for whatever reason. Um, you put some um, packing tape over the window to try to hold it together when it breaks. Um, I didn't do that. I didn't do much preparation, but I know that that is the room that I will go into. Um, another thing that can be done is you can fill up the bathtub with water in case there isn't running water um, after the storm. But um, I didn't do that, and I will be using that bathtub if it gets so bad that, I mean, because we're under a tornado watch uh, as well. And if a tornado comes and it rips the roof off and things start falling uh, on top of me, uh, the safest place to be would be in the bathtub um, covered with, you know, pillows, probably um, sitting like this in the bathtub. But I don't think it'll come to that. Um, I, I, I don't panic. Um, I think uh, there's been a uh, complete news blackout about uh, anything else. You would think there's nothing going on, nothing else going on in the world. Uh, I am a cord cutter, so um, all I get is local channels. So they're covering this heavily. And everything that can be said about the storm can be said in about five to 10 minutes. I don't think it's necessary that they go around the clock with this, but that is what they're doing. They're speaking for hours about this. Um, they are not informing people, they are scaring people. Um, I do think believe that people need to be informed. You just put a little ticker on the bottom of the screen. And everything that anyone needs to know uh, can be put down there and uh, people can be informed whenever they tune in and uh, or regular programming can continue. It doesn't need to be disrupted with back-to-back -back coverage about the storm. It's unnecessary. Uh, what these uh, news reporters end up doing is just speculating and theorizing what is gonna happen and it just ends up scaring people. They start saying things like, oh yeah, we." We see now that uh, the uh, storm has lost strength, but it is still a very huge storm, and you know you can still die. So, uh, you know, take shelter, do this, do that. It's just, un I, I just think it's that's unnecessary. And, you know, when you cry wolf once too often, then people s stop heeding the warnings, and that's what we want to avoid. So all this speculating that's going on in the news media is responsible for driving some of these people uh, nearly insane. You know, uh, they're wringing their hands, assuming that the worst thing is going to happen. Um, and it seems like, you know, it's, it's not just the news media. It's also, I believe, what's in some people's hearts, because I think people really want to be 
part of something big. They want to become part of the story. They want to be a victim. It's like some form of Munhauser syndrome. I'm not even sure what it's called, you know, but, you know, there, there are people that want sympathy. They want to become part of a story and they're giving us like play by play everything that's going on. There's people that's already using Facebook to indicate and, or I should say, mark themselves safe. And the storm has only started. And I think that's really uh, ir an irresponsible thing to do because I know you're anxious to try to let people know about yourself. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're saying, hey, listen to me. Look what's going on with me. I'm safe. You know, I mean, that's really, without really giving it that much thought, that's really what some people are doing. And um, it, it's, it, it's irresponsible because the storm has only just begun. It can get a lot worse. You can ultimately lose power or the roof to your house, who knows? Um, and if you're already talking about the storm when it hasn't even reached you, or it, it's not through with you, then if something really does go wrong and you're not able to communicate when something really does go wrong, then everybody's just gonna look back to the message where you have marked yourself safe and think that you are when you're not, all right? And you may need their help and they may be able to offer it. So wait and do that when the storm has gone by. Some of this news coverage is just really, I believe, just irresponsible. It goes too far. It motivates people to do insane things. Uh, I got a photo from a friend who sent me a picture of someone. It looked like they were at Walmart with a shopping cart that was just overflowing with water. There was water on the bottom shelf. There was just water just overflowing on the top. I think there was actually two shopping carts. And I'm thinking, all right, maybe you have a large family. Maybe you do need a lot of water. But other people need water too, all right? So try to leave some for someone else. Just take what you need. People like that, I think, end up having more water than what they need and end up gouging people that really need the water. It's just not right. The water will be available after. There'll be bottled water, I'm sure. Uh, there will be rescue efforts and they will get us the water that we need. What you need to do is just, while you have running water, fill up some pitchers of water. Put them in your freezer. Jack up the, the settings of the refrigerator to the coldest setting. All right? Uh, fill your bathtub up with water. There's running water now. Now is not the time to be bottled, buying bottled water. You buy bottled water when you don't have running water and you're running low on the water that you have, been sto that you have stored. So, I just, people really need to just chill, you know, um, don't be, don't react with your emotions, you know, and everything will be fine. When it's time to panic, then fine, but I don't think that time will come. Um, those of us that live here in Florida, we've been through this many a times, and, um, you know, we survive. We always have and we always will. We'll always find a way. Um, so just prepare for the worst and hope for the best. That's what is always said and, and it, it's true. You know, um, so not only say it, but behave accordingly. Um, so I do want to get back to um, a subject that I started segueing into and never finished and that is my experiences with the hurricanes. The first one uh, that I can recall um, living here in Florida was Hurricane Andrew. You know, they call Florida the Sunshine State. I don't know why. Uh, they might as well call it the Thunderbolt State or the uh, Swamp and Mosquito State uh, because sunshine, we don't get a lot of that. Um, it usually gets much too hot and the clouds just open up and pour down rain. And the heat is also what fuels these hurricanes. They actually pick up speed um, when they move over the warm waters. And the waters are about 90 degrees between uh, Cuba and Florida. And, um, but anyway, the first one I remember is Hurricane Andrew. And that was in 92. And that was, I believe, only the third Cat 5 hurricane that has hit the continental United States since recorded history. 
Um, I believe there was one in the 60s called Camille, and then there was another one, I believe it was in the early 80s, called Hurricane Allen. Uh, but I was here by 92, and I was living uh, east of Interstate 95, um, and uh, but west of uh, Federal Highway and A1A in uh, Broward County near Fort Lauderdale. And I was in the, um, I don't even think it was recommended, I think it was a mandatory evacuation. And I was taking a nap when this evacuation order was issued, and I remember my mother coming to my house and she's like banging on the windows, wake up, wake up, you need to go. I've never liked to prepare for the storms. I've never liked to do it. I know it's something that we need to do. I understand nobody likes to do it, but I'm somebody that rolls the dice and, um, you know, I've been blessed not to have to experience anything really bad. Andrew was bad, but it came through, I think that it was a direct hit on Homestead, which was in uh, Dade County, now Miami-Dade County, but it was uh, Dade County back then, and that's where that storm went, but it, it was still bad for uh, Fort Lauderdale as well. I remember I had to evacuate uh, to a friend's house that lived uh, further inland, and um, he only had one bedroom, so I had to sleep in his bedroom, and um, and that was because there was a sliding glass door in the living room. So if that window broke, um, I could be seriously injured. So um, I uh, stayed there and the next day we woke up and we looked out the window and it was just tree limbs down and lots of leaves. And uh, that was Andrew. Now the next storm I remember was in 2000, around 2000, it's a, it's a forgotten storm, it's called Hurricane Irene, it's not one that anyone talks about anymore, but that was a, a dry storm, it wasn't a lot of rain, but it was a lot, I'm sorry, not a lot of wind, but it was a lot of rain, and I remember the storm letting up, and I ventured out, and I went to have dinner, and on the way back, I was following traffic, and the traffic was slowing, and I'm like, what's What's going on here? Why are people slowing down? And I found out why. I had hit water. I was like in a lake. I was, the, the water must have been like four feet high. It did come into the cabin of the vehicle. And every time like an SUV or a pickup truck or any vehicle that was able to get by would come by, um, it would just it hit my car with water and my car would just start bobbing around. And that car was never the same. Um, it was repaired, uh, but even after I'd be driving along, and for no reason, the car would just shut off as I'm driving. It was pretty, pretty scary. It's not like I was like idling out of light and it shut off. It shut off as I was driving. So that's why I always remember that storm. And then the very next vast, bad storm was in 2005, and that was a bad year for a lot of us. That was when Katrina went to New Orleans. Um, uh, Charlie, uh, I believe, went through Central Florida, where I'm living now and um, Wilma hit South Florida. And in that storm, I mean, I'm still paying for that storm. I have um, the, the, the property, I still have it. It's a rental property now. And um, I'm paying like 80 bucks a month for a uh, hurricane fund to, um, you know, uh, what's the word, restore and um, rebuild after the storm. And I remember coming out after the storm and looking around and those trees down on top of cars, just trees down and leaves and branches everywhere. That was, that was a bad storm. And then um, now I live in central Florida and it's been quiet the last decade, uh, longer actually, until last year we had Hurricane Matthew and th there wasn't, uh, I didn't see much of a disturbance as a result of that. Uh, I think it just went up along the coast and it wasn't quite as a big a storm as this one. This one's much bigger. Um, and so um, my plan is if, if, if it gets really bad enough and I have to go into uh, my bathroom I'll, you know, and take cover in there, that's what I'll do. But um, I'm optimistic. Um, I am monitoring what's going on, that's all I can do. Panic doesn't do anyone any good. It doesn't change what's gonna happen. Uh, if you are in the path of the storm, I wish you well. Uh, God be with us all. 
and uh, I hope to get together and do this again really soon um, without having you know any interruption to our life, loss of internet or uh, or cell phone service. Uh, we're able to eat and be happy. All right, so um, thank you again for taking time out of your day to listen to me, and we'll do it again real soon. Ow.